All right, welcome everyone to our Attraction in Action Mastermind. Gang, we do this every single Wednesday. We do it at 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific. I want you to keep showing up. Let us improve your knowledge, your skills, your mindset, your habits, so that you too can build a massive revenue share organization and frankly, be able to hit the exit button on your real estate career someday. See, I think that's important because the traditional model has failed you and I in creating a clear path to financial freedom. In fact, most traditional brokerage models are designed to keep you and I on the transactional treadmill for the rest of our lives. You understand this, right? Seriously, an agent who closed 10 transactions last year, they want to do 20 this year. Let's say they achieve that. Well, they've raised their level of income. So what do they do with their lifestyle? Yeah, they generally raise that lifestyle to match the level of income. Don't we tend to spend what we make? Right, how many of you guys have experienced that phenomenon earlier in your career? right, where no matter how much money you made that month, if it was $5,000, if it was $50,000, if it was $100,000, it was just enough to get by. Anyone experience that? Yeah, we've, we've all kind of been there at one time or another, no doubt. But then you get to a position of abundance where you make so much money, you can't spend it all, which is a, a high-class problem to have, no doubt about that. And that's what eXp allows you and I to do. Yet, let's say they closed 20 transactions last year. Now they want to close 50 this year. If they achieve that, they've raised their level of income. So what do they do with their lifestyle? Of course, they're going to buy a new car. They're going to buy a new house. So the next year, they have to. They don't have a choice. They have to close at least 50 transactions just to maintain the lifestyle. And this is the transactional treadmill that I'm talking about that is almost impossible to get off of. Yet I invited a special guest, one of the Icon Coaching clients, one of my favorite clients from, from the past, um, Jeff and Amanda Whitespear. Many of you are familiar with their, their names. They're down in Houston. They, they do one heck of a business, no doubt about that. In fact, uh, uh, Amanda, welcome. Why don't you go and unmute yourself? I, I want you to just kind of tell your story a little bit. I mean, where were you and Jeff when, when you engaged me as your coach? And, and what kind of ensued after that when you installed different models, systems, technology, and people to the organization to really scale it out? Tell the story. Oh my gosh, it's such a cool story. So Jeff and I have been with EXP now for six years. It's gone by really fast. And I think when we hired you as our coach, I don't even know if you have had switched over to EXP yet. I had not. Um, I think, yeah, it was an official. And it was really neat because we, I was one of those people, I was like, you know, I don't know what this cloud world is. Uh, you know, my husband says I'll make more money here. I was very comfy where I was. And I, I told my broker, I was like, save my office for 90 days. I have to do this for my family, but I'll be right back kind of thing. And that was six years ago. And what's so neat is when I first joined, we came for stock or technology. Everybody comes for different reasons. Revenue share, we were not smart. We did not know. We didn't get it. It didn't click. For the first two years, we were like, we're not going to do that. We want to have more listings. We want to have more closings. And so we hired Sean to teach us how to nail the listing presentation and how to really build out our team and have more leverage. And as he's going through all of the systems, we're telling him about you know, our company. I know he knew about it. He was like, you have this opportunity, have this other stream of revenue. Why aren't you taking advantage of it? Like you're going after buyers and sellers every single day. There's agents on the other end of that. It just makes sense. And we were like, oh no, we're not going to do that. I don't want a second job. And so he picked on our team leader and he said, listen, go make five phone calls, talk to five of the agents you've done a deal with and come back next week. That's your homework. Tell me how it went. And we're like, okay, you know, I guess we'll just do it because we're paying this guy to tell us what to do. We need to actually do it. Right. And we came back the next week and Sean asked, how did it go? And he said, three of them are signing up five conversations and three of them are signing up. And so the rest is history. We've been here for six years. I missed out on my first two years of recruiting because I didn't even pay attention to it. And Sean forced us to do it, which is an awesome. Um, he, bro he broke it down. He said, just one a month, just like you said, just, you know, break it down to something that is easy and obtainable. I said, five year goal, one a month at the end of five years, I'll have 60 people. I have failed miserably. I only have 45 people on my front level, but that has grown to over 900 in our group. And so thank you for forcing us to take that step. It's been fun. Fantastic. And how about the production side of your business? When you first engaged me as, as your coach, where were you guys at? And then where are you at now? So I think we were right around 140 deals for the year, um, which was a lot. I was working nights and weekends. I had one kid. I wanted to have a second kid. And I just couldn't figure out how to have a family life balance. And I have this really cool ETA business build out that I still use every day with my people. And the reason I have it is he sat down and he said, okay, last year you did 140 deals. Next year, you're going to do 300. And I was like, 
I am not doing 300. We are not doing 300. That's just not going to happen. That's just so unattainable. And um, this last year we hit right at 600 transactions and this year we'll do even more than that. So it works. You know what that is, Amanda? <laughs> Somebody tell Amanda, what is that? Winning. That's winning. winning. <laughs> I love and it. now I go with nice, nice weekends. Like he was help, able to help us kind of leverage it off and get the systems in place. And now I'm able to teach others. Like you don't have to work 40 hours or 60 hours and every single weekend, you can still watch your kids grow up. And so, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Well, it's just a matter of working smarter rather than harder. See, many people come to me when they've kind of achieved that natural ceiling of achievement. And Amanda, that's exactly where you guys were at where you couldn't work with another buyer, you couldn't take another listing because you couldn't create an extra week in a month. You just can't. So it was just about working smarter to apply leverage through models, systems, technology, and people. And here you are, you know, a couple of years later and you've, you've six, seven X'd your production, your income, and you're getting that life back in the process, right? And that's what we all want to see. And it allows you to uh, allow a little bit more time for agent attraction, right? It's really so much way fun. to go, Amanda. So uh, over 900 agents in your RevShare organization currently. How's the revenue share increased exponentially? How does that compare to real estate sales? Just give me your, uh, you don't give us a number. Don't give us a number. I just want you to, to just give us kind of a mindset shift uh, and compare the real estate income to what you're doing with revenue share now. And, and what's the difference? How does it feel? Just ex let them experience the emotion associated with that, please. It's, it's a blast. And I don't know how long y'all have been in business. Like for me, it's been 14 years. And after 10 years, your passion starts to slow down. You get tired, if you will. Um, but you do it because you're, that's what you're great at. You're great at selling houses. That's what you've done forever. Um, but you always have to have that capital risk and time investment to be able to go on to that next level. And like Sean said, if you do this, well, the next year you have to sell more because you now have more expenses. And with revenue share was the exact opposite. It was something where you had to build the foundation and it's totally exponential growth. So the first year you're like, okay, this is kind of cool. And the second year you're like, oh, this makes sense. And then you're three, four, five. It's just every year it's doubled. It's doubled, it's doubled. So we have 900 now, but we started last last year at 400 agents. And the year before that, it was 140. And so it's more than doubled every single year. And now I can go, okay, I have 900. I know that it's going to grow whether I like it or not at this point. Next year, I'll have at least 2,000. And so for y'all who are starting out and you have two or three or five people, it's impossible to get to 100. It's so hard. Like you want to give up. Don't give up because once you get to 100, getting to 500 is easy and getting to 1,000 is a breeze. So exponential growth, think about it like this and it'll just keep doubling. Oh, undoubtedly. Uh, and I've said this at least a thousand times on calls like this. Gang, it is 10,000 times more difficult, like Amanda said, to go from zero to 100 than it is to go to, from 100 to, to 5,000. 10,000 times more difficult. Now, I just celebrated my three-year anniversary four days ago here at EXP. Now, with over 2,200 people in the organization, guys, it's just, it's on a rocket ship. You can't stop it. And God, I'm so grateful because it's the only thing that I've ever discovered that has increased my freedom and my income at exactly the same time. I mean, you can increase your income in real estate sales, yet you're going to pay for that income, aren't you? You're trading time for money, in essence. You're going to pay for it with your freedom, where revenue shares can increase your freedom and your income exactly the same time. And it is a pain in the ass to go from zero to 100. It truly is. Yeah, you got to put your head down. You just have to grind it out. Because once you hit 100, then you reach this position of momentum and you can't slow it down. You just can't slow it down. How many people on the call with me today have over 100 in their RevShare organization? All right, fantastic. Will Fendon, I see your hand is up. Also another Icon Coaching client. Will, thank you um, for the opportunity to align with you guys and help you. Go ahead and unmute yourself and tell me, how hard was it to go from zero to 100? Uh, yeah, it was really hard. Excruciating. That was, that was the hardest piece. Now we're trying to figure out how to build on that and, and not go the other, the other way. <laughs> No doubt about that. Good, good. So right now you have 45 FLQAs, right, Amanda? Frontline qualifying yeah. agents. How many agents did, have you attracted in total over the last six years to get to 45? Because, you know, I don't know the exact number of people at EXP that have over 40 frontline qualifying agents, yet it's not as many as you would think. I think it's like 25 to 30 agents somewhere in there have 40 plus FLQAs. So, um, it took you just over six years to get there. How many agents did you have to attract that actually completed the application to EXP to get to 45 FLQAs? Um, over six years, I'd say right at 100, 100 agents. I mean, people quit at everything, but over the last six years, I would say on average, 
half of them will qualify. Um, and I really struggled with that. At first, I, I'm like a, a fixer, right? I want to help you. I want to fix you. I want to create your mindset kind of thing. And, and I struggled with that because I asked my um, my sponsor, I was like, I brought on these five people and only one or two of them are really taking in and recruiting and growing. And I said, how do I fix the other three? And he said, everyone's success is different. Everyone's values are different and what they want to do. Go find five more. And so I have that mindset of go find five more and just plug them into the system. So, but yeah, I would say about, about half. Oh, Jeff just commented. He said 117. Yeah, I see that, 117 FLAs, okay, and that's th through the entire duration, whether they've stayed with EXP or not, 117 in total and 45 FLQAs. And guys, I've said it so many times before, and I've studied all the larger revenue share groups from Brett Gove and Gene Frederick, Rob Flick, Mike, Michael Reese, Jay Kinder. The, the average is going to be about 50% of the agents that you attract over to EXP are going to stay with EXP and become frontline qualifying agents. So that's kind of a... a a necessary part of this. Now, there's some outliers out there, like Lars Hedenborg, also one of my clients here at Icon Coaching. Um, you know, he's attracted like 33 agents to his frontline, and 32 of them are frontline qualifying agents. Now, the reason for that is he only goes after teams. John Mendelson, who happens to be on the call with us today, he also typed in and said there are 39 agents at EXP that have 40 plus FLQAs at this moment. So it's a challenging endeavor. There's no doubt about that. Not everybody's going to get there yet by showing up to this week after week after week, by plugging in to improve your knowledge, your skills, your mindset, your habits, guys, you're going to get there. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It does take tenacity. No doubt about that. So a couple more questions for you, Amanda. Uh, how is your prospecting for frontline agents? How has that changed? What, if, what, you, what, what were you doing? What are you doing now? I mean, what does that look like? So my first two years, of course, I was doing nothing. Total rookie mistake. Y'all get out of your own heads. Like I had all the reasons. I was like, oh, it's for those people. And those top 1% like have passive income or they're cool. Or a lot of people I hear go, oh, you have to sell a lot of houses to be able to be a recruiter. My sponsor's a professional soccer player who doesn't sell houses, right? So there's a niche for everyone in the world. Um, when I first started, it was just people I knew. And then I ran out of those. And then it was new agents. Love them, but they, they were tough. And then now I'm getting to the point where I know the model, it's fun, I'm confident. And this year it's been teams and brokerages. Those people need EXP more than anybody. So if you have a friend who's a broker or who's running a team in this market, they have all so much overhead, go love on them. Like I just, actually my my 9 a.m. this morning was a team leader. He's, he's running an office of 600 agents and he's coming over. And I couldn't get him at first, but I got the assistant team leader. And then the assistant team leader helped me get the team leader, but everyone's coming. They might as well name you as their sponsor. <laughs> I love it, Amanda. Fantastic. So remember, guys, there's just five things that you can do to really uh, turn up the, no the knob on your attraction. Okay, just five things. This is the 20% job description list. And I'm referencing Pareto's principle, right? It's the 80-20 rule, where 20% of your activities around agent attraction will yield a minimum of 80% of your results. Now, just five things on the 20% job description list. Number one is practice. You got to know what to say. You got to know how to say it. Now, many agents, they don't want to practice. They think, oh, I'll do that during my playtime. That, that's like playing around. Yet, here's the point. With mere words, gang, when you know what to say, you know how to say it, and you say it to enough people, you can make millions of dollars here at eXp with revenue share. So knowing what to say, knowing how to say it is critically important. So practice is number one. Number two, lead generation. To identify those candidates in the marketplace today that would be open-minded to just simply investigate the model. Number three is lead follow-up. Okay, real quick, show of hands. How many of you have had somebody align with you here at eXp and it took over two years to get them here? Anyone? It took me over three years to get here, no doubt about that, from the first time I heard about the model. Yet the fortunate is in the follow-up, no doubt about that. Now, when we focus on those first three categories, practice, lead generation, lead follow-up, that's gonna lead to the natural byproduct of the next two things, on the list of five things of your 20% job description, which is going on appointments, having your attraction appointments, Zoom meetings, telephone calls, or face-to-face, -face, and then negotiating the transfer. Those are the only five things that are going to move the needle for your revenue share growth. No doubt about that. So it's those of you who figure out how to give an inordinate amount of your time to those five things and or apply leverage to the model such that you can get the results that you want. Like, guys, I'm back-to-back -back coaching sessions all day long. It's challenging for me to pick up the phone and start calling agents to say, hey, are you open-minded? Would you investigate the EXP model? It's really challenging. 
So what I've done is I've applied leverage through models, systems, technology, and people to get the results that I want. So all that front end work gets done for me. And when the person shows up to have an attraction conversation with me, they've watched an appointment confirmation video, they've watched the nine minute video, they've watched a 45 minute video of me explaining the model. They've had a conversation with my director of sales, who's also, also with the XP. And it's the easiest attraction call you'll ever have. So it's either give most of your time to those five things or figure out the leverage points to make certain that you can get the results that you want, no doubt. What I was surprised by is if you master this, it really is a good play into like your production. The same things that you do in production, if you do that at a high level, you use the same prospecting or set five appointments per week or whatever mindset you have, you're using that same skill set to recruiting. So the, the more you come to these classes and the better recruiter you become, the better of a realtor you'll, you'll be because they go hand in hand. All right. Well, Amanda, you and Jeff have achieved extraordinary success. Tell me, what do you say to an agent the first time you talk to him about? Uh, how do you bring it up? How do you, how do you even introduce the concept of EXP? Everyone's different. I know there's scripts out there for everyone. Naturally, I'm kind of introverted and I, I don't, I'm not a very well scripted person. And so for me, it's, I'm bringing value to their business. And the more value I bring, there's going to be a moment where they think about EXP and they're going to think of me. Um, and so I will just go, hey, how's business? How do you like it over there at Remax? Or, oh my gosh, you really give away half your money at Caldwell Banker or Martha Turner or, you know, different questions like that, especially if you do a transaction with them it's okay to be open and honest and go, oh my gosh, like I've worked with 20 people this, this month and you have been my favorite. You've been amazing. How's it going? Let's meet for coffee. And, and genuinely don't even care about if they're going to join the company or not, just love on them and see how you can bring value to their business. And I've had some people who are top producers who have an ego and they know that they should be with the XP, but they, they can't do it, who have brought me four or five other agents. And so I'll say, it's okay if it's not for you, no problem. And it's not for everybody, but let's just talk business. And I want to see how I can help you and how you can help me and we can bring each other leverage. And by the end of it, you have a new friend, a new referral partner, but nine times out of 10, they're coming and they're bringing other people with them. When you're doing it so humbly, you know, perhaps I can help you. Perhaps you can help me, right? It's not that I'm the teacher and you're the student. No, we're just here to collaborate with one another. I think it's brilliant. No doubt about that. So I know what a lot of people on this call are thinking. They're thinking, okay, well, Jeff and Amanda, they're closing over 600 transactions a year. Of course, they have more opportunity than I have. What would you say to them? Um, that is true, right? Obviously, we we are in front of more agents, but that doesn't make, I don't go to happy hours. I don't go to networking events. You guys have opportunities for that, but you could just pick up the phone. My guy found me off LinkedIn. He was like, hey, I see you're a realtor in Houston. Let's have a phone conversation. Had never heard of EXP. Didn't know who he was. There's a lot of people who are selling houses in your subdivision. Pick up the phone, be like, hey, I make it a point to know all the rock stars in my in my neighborhood. How have we not met? How is business? Let's let's see how we can help each other. And so just like if you want to work with buyers or sellers, you pick up the phone and you set those appointments. Talk to five people a week. If if you're really serious about retiring one day and making this part of your business plan, set those expectations for yourself. But more conversations will lead to more closings. No doubt about that. Way to go, Amanda. Um, so another quick question for you. How long does it generally take you to onboard an agent? Because to me, the onboarding sequence and that process is more than 80% work, right? If you remember the five things is practice, lead, gen, lead, follow up, go on appointments, negotiate contracts, uh, or negotiate your transfer. Really, it doesn't have anything to do with the onboarding side. Because to me, that's the 80% stuff. It's not part of the 20% work. So how have you applied leverage to that side of the business? Talk to me. So we have, we hired two people. One is my um, ex, uh, expansion manager. So she helps once they get onboarded, she helps them get set up their email signature, their announcement, all of that. And then we also have an onboarding concierge because to be honest, I, you don't want me setting up your sky slope. I don't know my login for sky slope, right? So you want someone who does the same job over and over and over and are really great at doing that and leverage that off. And so we, we have a, this is what your first 30 days looks like. This is what your first nine weeks looks like. Here's the checklist of things you need to do, but also a live person there as an onboarding concierge to make them feel very important and very smooth. That first, that first week is their initial reaction and you're setting the pace. Whatever you do with that prospect as they're joining is what they're going to do with their prospects when they bring them on. No doubt. All right, Amanda. Yeah, hire someone. Don't do it. <laughs> hire someone. Don't do it. That is brilliant. Okay, Mr. Palacino, you've been very patient with your hand up. Thank you, sir. Sean is one of the, uh, the coaches here at Icon Coaching. Does a bang up job. No doubt about that. So, Sean, go ahead and ask your question, buddy. Great. Thanks. You know, I wanted to, Amanda said a, a good thing there was she was already selling real estate at such a high level. 
you know, and you were you were not even at KW. You were still at KW when before she you you came to EXP and then you continued to talk to her. What I'd like for you to share, Sean, is what was that like getting her to see? Like she said, I was comfortable where I was, and I, I can think of our relationship. I mean, you left KW and came to EXP, and it still took me two years to follow you. And I can only say that I was like totally vested in KW and I, I, I kind of refused to take off my KW filtered glasses and look at the model in an objective, unbiased way. How does how does an, an agent get an how does an EXP agent get somebody like Amanda to do that? That's a great question. Um, in fact, Sean, when uh, when I was going through the, the list of people that I know of who should join the XP. Who would never join EXP? Well, Sean, you were on that list of, of the individual who would never, ever join EXP. And yet it was just a mindset to say, okay, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to come from contribution. I'm going to reach out to Sean, see if he's open-minded to just a, a new opportunity. And what did you say, Sean, by the way? I said no. <laughs> and so, and two, uh, years later, two years later, I had a birthday. I turned 50. And I, I, one day I remember my wife was totally shocked when I said, we're leaving KW. She was blown away. I had no clue. And I had turned 50 and I was like, man, I do not want to be selling realties, selling real estate in my seventies. And I looked at my retirement options and I didn't have very many. And that was the, that was what got me to take my glasses off. Or maybe that happened when I had my glasses off and now, and then Jason Lindstrom had left and I saw a video come across my email of Jason Lindstrom and, and I never thought he would have left and that made me call you. And Elgin's on the call, Elgin shared EXP with me uh, as well. There were several people that shared it with me in that two year period, but I called you because of our relationship and you had been pretty impactful in my real estate career. And but something something caught me when I had my glasses off and that's what shifted for me. But I was curious to hear what shifted for Amanda because she said I was comfortable. I was so vested in, in KW. I'd become a team leader. I was a productivity coach. I was on the ALC seven terms. I'd taken bold seven times. I mean, you know, yep. but what shifted for you? It's funny that you mentioned your, your glasses thing because everyone has a trigger. They have a moment where they're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Like the blindfolders come off. And so that's why like when you're in real estate, you're like, when you think of real estate, think of me. When you think of EXP, think of me because we're going to have this conversation and two years is going to go by and you're going to have an OS moment, right? Um, and so ours was our coach, thanks, made us do a profit loss statement. We had never done one of those before. And so I did my first PL and I was like, I'm paying Kate. I was at KW for seven years. I'm paying you how much for my for the brand, like for this this brand on the back of my business card. And it was like people do business with people, people follow business. And when I switched, nobody even noticed. Like it was all these preconceived notions that I had. I drank the Kool-Aid forever. And it was just knowing that I was paying for something and I wasn't getting the return on investment didn't feel good. And so I yeah. didn't even know if EXP would work out. I was like, EXP, what? Don't know what a cloud is. I'm not techie to save my life. But I was like, if half of this is true, I'm in a better place. So, so yeah. far, so good. And Gary Keller, Gary Keller never offered you stock and never offered Sean stock and never offered me stock and never offered Elgin stock. Yeah, so totally different. <laughs> Well, good stuff. So timing has a lot to do with the outcome of a rain dance, right? When I contacted you two years prior, Sean, you were closed minded. No doubt about that. And yet, you know, thank you for reaching back out to me, by the way, that shows integrity. It shows uh, the strength of our relationship and the, the value that you and I can provide to one another. Way to go, man. Way to go. So Teddy, Thanks. you've been really patient. Let's go over to you, Teddy. Hey, you're muted. Yeah, Teddy, uh, you might have a problem with your microphone. Try and get that figured out. Let's go over got to it. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, sorry. I have a double mute, so I uh, have a safety net here. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in Amanda's group, so it's kind of fun hearing her talk again. And, and Sean is my coach, so it's awesome. great. Um, but I have a question for Sean, Sean and Amanda. What's that two-year follow-up look like? I was in the same situation. I know what it looked like for me. And it wasn't a follow-up. It was taking off my KW glasses. Um, and it was one post on Facebook that did it for me. 
But what does a two-year follow-up look like? Was it as simple to saying, hey, when you're thinking about real estate, when you're thinking about coming over to eXp, think of me? Because the people who reached out to me early on never followed up. Got it. Well, from, from my perspective, if we just keep you know, calling them, maybe it's once a week, every other week, once a month, and talk to, talking to them only about eXp, I think that becomes really annoying. They're going to want to block you. They're going to ghost you. Or you see your number come up in caller ID and they're going to say, I'm not answering that today. So to me, it's coming from contribution. Every Tuesday at two o'clock central, I do a uh, mastermind. It's called the Accelerated Breakthrough Mastermind. We don't talk about eXp, not at all. We just talk about how to improve your sales production, your sales volume, your net income, your net worth. And we talk about all the different strategies, tactics. We talk through business planning methodology, accountability measures. We don't talk at all about eXp. Yet, if, if they've engaged with me at one point or another to learn about eXp, they're added to the CRM Grow platform, and they're linked into a looping automation where every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock central, they're going to receive an email. Now, we don't do SMS text because they have not opted in for SMS. So, so we send an email every Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock central, to remind them of the 2 o'clock afternoon uh, accelerated mastermind breakthrough. It includes a, a link for them to register for the call. And I might've had an attraction conversation with somebody three months ago. And every Tuesday, they're gonna get this email and they don't show up, they don't show up, they don't show up. And then three months later, they show up to this mastermind that allows us to just add value to the individual. I make a special note that that person actually showed up today and we're gonna follow up with them to set an appointment to talk about EXP. Does that make sense, Teddy? It does, yep, thank you. I think people get annoyed when you're just sending them information about the stocks or you're sending a new video about eXp, how we expanded into Poland yeah. recently. I mean, people really don't care about that stuff. They care about themselves. They care about their production. And so when you give them what they want, then you can show them what they need. Make sense? You with me? Yeah. Right on. Okay, we'll send it over. Oh, by the way, let's, let's get some other perspectives on that question because it's a great question. How do you follow, follow up with people? I think events is such great leverage, not only for recruiting and retention, but for duplication because, and now that eXp is so valid, there's probably lots of live events going on in your, in your area. And if not create one, because you'll be with someone and you'll help them with their business. And yes, you're cool, but they haven't got to meet the dozens of other people in your group that are way cooler than you. And so you're talking about collaboration community for them to go to a group event and learn about production or how to you know deal with the shift or work with investors or whatever it is that's bringing their business value. There's going to be talk about KV Core. Or there's going to be talk about you know listing syndication or some kind of tech, something that's going to trigger them about about EXP. So I think events for me has been the easiest way to recruit. Where as an introvert, I don't have to have those uncomfortable conversations. I can share the love and and they benefit too. So are you are you creating events, Amanda, or are you leveraging other people's events? Or both. Starting off, starting off, I would leverage other people's events. And then my sponsor made me start doing lunch and learns, which I hated. So he came in and helped me do them for the first six months. And then I did them for three years. And then for those of you who are growing, growing, your task is now to find five leaders and teach those five leaders how to do it. And so now every week we have something live in Houston and I don't have to do them anymore. I just pop in and, and bring value. So both. And invite, <laughs> create awareness, Bye. right? Get people yes. to show up. It's fantastic. So when you started doing lunch and learns, how did you promote them? I do um, Eventbrite and then also Facebook events. And then do a little video. You can invite, you know, everyone, ask your agents to invite other people. But Eventbrite's been really good because about half of them that show up are not with EXP so far. It's fantastic, Amanda. Good stuff. All right. Well, Fendon, over to you, buddy. Hey, um, thank you, Amanda, for everything you're sharing. And Sean, as always, that what you were just talking about at the end of that last answer about events and so forth touches on what I wanted to ask about. Um, we're noticing sometimes with the bigger agents and the teams, I, I feel almost like there's this pressure now within eXp, like there, it, it can get competitive with between different groups within eXp. And we sometimes feel like there's this pressure almost to, to have something more to offer even than just the eXp brokerage model, which I still think is amazing and offers us all like all kinds of resources. But I'm just wondering, you know, do you do you feel like do you feel pressure now to, you know, kind of package up what you guys do somehow? Like we're the we're the people that can teach you how to do 600 transactions, you know, a year, or we can teach you how to do a thousand or what like something beyond everything that eXp already is. 
Like we feel a pressure sometimes. And if I'm honest, even a little bit of an insecurity sometimes like, oh, well, we can't compete with that group down in San Diego now because, you know, they're doing X, Y, and Z or some other group now. They're the YouTube experts or whatever. But <laughs> I remain convinced that EXP just on its own is just an amazing model that offers us just so much stuff. But I'm just, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. That's totally been so valid. I feel like five years ago, I was educating people on what EXP was and the conversation was, what are the splits and what's my return on investment? And there's four reasons why people join. And now it's totally, I get EXP, I sit on Facebook, I watch the YouTube video, I'm shopping sponsors. And I'm like, oh, it's one of those. Like they're everywhere nowadays. And so we totally have created our team. We have a unique value proposition, just like you would bring to your listing presentation, right? Of this is what we offer. And it's, it's not fun, right? I'm like, why do I have to do this? But that's the world that we're in. And so I would just say, even if you're not like selling a bunch of houses, I, I go, I have got a girl who does commercial. I think that's really cool. I've got a luxury person. I have a farm and ranch person. I have someone who does Airbnbs and hedge funds. And so no matter what your, your niche is, I might not be the person to teach you that, but I've got a guy, right? And that's just as good. And so yes, you met me and I'm cool. Wait till you meet this person and wait till you meet that person. And so you don't have to be the best recruiter or sponsor or producer out there, but you do need to have a unique, like an elevator pitch because it's getting to the point where they're like, Hey, you're great. Will why, why you and, and not Sean? And that's a hard question. Right. And so you have to build that trust, build that relationship and, and have something to say. Perfect. Thank you. Great input, Amanda. Jack, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I got two questions uh, regarding like as, as when you, I have I got a little over I got about 150 agents 170 agents around that range, and uh, I find that there's actually a lot that we have to do uh, in terms of like what you said uh, like setting up weekly emails onboarding them yada 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 um, and which I'm pretty sure you guys delegate. Uh, Let's say if we were to hire people to help us out in terms of recruiting, or attracting agent, whatever, um, who should that person, who should, what should they do first? And secondly, I want to do videos, right? Uh, and where I'm still selling homes, uh, should I be doing more videos in terms of like educating agents or um, like market videos? What are your opinions, Amanda? Great question, Jack. Thank you. On, on videos, uh, for me, I've, I've kind of shifted to educating agents um, just because my database is full and I'm still actively selling houses as well. Um, it's kind of up to you on what your target market will be. Either way, as long as you're valid and, and putting out good info, I think, I think you'll be fine. Uh, as far as who you hire as an expansion manager or any kind of leverage, um, for me, it was a young 20-something who was getting into real estate, loved people, was great at technology, and I knew I couldn't pay her a lot, and I eventually she'll outgrow me, but I'm teaching her all the systems, and I I knew I did, she wanted $1,000 every other, you know, every week, right, or every other week, and so what I did is I, I went to my five leaders, and I said, hey, leaders, you want to grow, you want someone to set up all your invites, you want someone to Love on your every Tuesday, we go, hey, you joined our company, you joined our group, welcome, and they get a three-way text. So all of the leaders agreed to pitch in $300 each, and then that paid for the expansion manager. So I didn't have to cover it all by myself. So find your leaders within your 150 people who are willing to grow, and they're getting some skin in the game, so they're really going to be committed, and have them pitch in for your next leverage. Fantastic. Great information. Great so you don't have to take all the weight, put it on, on your shoulders. You can leverage that out through your organization. Those people who choose to accomplish what you're accomplishing and just divvy up the cost makes total sense to me. Very smart. And one last quick question. As far as the lunch and learn, I mean, that you do, you just do straight up EXT explain or do you do like value added uh, lunch and learn? Yeah, I think maybe three years, like pre-COVID, you could get away with EXP Explain. Now everybody already knows about the EXP model. So they're like, oh, it's another one of those, right? And so make it fun, bring some value. We do a lot of, this is about production or this is about, you know, creative financing or how to figure out this darn interest rate or something like that. And then the last just five minutes is about EXP. The reason we are able to share all of our secrets with you and collaborate at such a high level and tell you all of this is because of our business model. And then we do a little QR code. And then our goal is to set another appointment with that person. Um, typically, we'll do a lunch and learn followed by a happy hour, which is golden because then they're having drinks surrounded by other EXP agents. And it's just brilliant. Um, but if you just talk about EXP for 30 minutes, I personally would be bored and I'm with the company. So mix it up. 
<laughs> Great input. I love it. Michael Kiter, over to you, bud. So Amanda, out of the 117 people you brought in, two-part question, are they local or national? And then are you offering them for your team or just EXP independently? So we're in about 40 states and five countries. Somehow I have like 100 Canadians on my sixth and seventh level. And those people know how to sell houses. It's so cool. Um, our actual team, I only have five other agents on our team. So with me and Jeff, we have seven agents. I wanted to keep it small. I can't adult babysit that many people. So most all of them, I would say 50, 60 percent are in Texas. Um, half of those are in Houston, but we're all over. I mean, I think if you teach people that you have to just recruit locally, you're handicapping them and they're missing out on the opportunity of the model where it's a total free-for-all. Absolutely. And I've shared this strategy in the past. Many of you have friends and family members outside of your state that are not real estate agents, yet they own real estate. So, so I shared the example. I called my cousin, Chad Colton. He's out in Carlsbad, California. I said, hey, Chad, uh, listen, today's call is about business, buddy. Do you have just two minutes to help me out? Now, we're similar age. We're, we're buddies. You know, whenever I get up to San Diego, which is all the time, we hang out, our families, their families, right? So I just said, hey, today's call is about business, buddy. You got just two minutes to help me out real fast. He said, yeah, of course, Sean, what's up? He said, well, I'm expanding my brokerage nationally, and I'm looking for really high-quality agents that I can create uh, an incredible opportunity for. Who do you know that sells real estate in Carlsbad that I should be in conversation with? He said, oh, Sean, the guy who helped us buy our house, great guy, he did a terrific job for Sandy and I. He said, would you, would you mind just text me his contact card? So he does. So I, follow, I, I called this guy, his name was John. I said, hey, John, uh, my name is Sean Kokoska, and I was just speaking with my cousin, Chad Colton. He and his wife, Sandy, they bought a home from you recently. And uh, I'm just curious, do you have just two minutes to help me out real quick? He says, well, yeah, of course. I said, well, listen, I'm expanding my brokerage nationally, and I'm looking for high quality agents. I reached out, Chad said, who do you know? And he said, I should definitely contact you. See, one thing I know for sure is that most agents, they're, they're giving up way too much of their hard-earned commissions to their brokerages. And at our brokerage, we compensate our agents in eight different ways. We improve your stock awards, your stock portfolio. One of these eight different ways is residual and passive income. Quite frankly, John, with a little bit of effort in three years' time, you would be able to retire if you choose to. No joke, be able to retire. I wonder, would you mind investing just 30 minutes with me to, to just learn about the model? Okay, he said yes, not because of what I said or how I said it, not so much. Why did he say yes? His client. He's a past client. He wants to look good in front of his past client, right? The last thing he would want is my cousin Chad never to do business with him again because I called him and said, that guy was a total dick to me, right? <laughs> of course, that's the last thing he wants. So he's going to say yes. And yet once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? So you pitch them on the model, they see the benefits and there you go. So one way to expand outside of your state through your influence with those that are not real estate agents, right? You just need like two or three of those nuggets and your whole team is built. My mom taught me one, huh? if you know anyone who's in the military, their veteran benefits will pay for their spouse's real estate classes. So if you know anyone in the military who has a board house wife, she can get her real estate classes done for free. And when they move every three years with the military, their cap stays the same because it's an international company. So that's been a huge recruiting play as well. Oh, that's big, Amanda. That's that's a huge idea right there. And I get military people, go for it. All right, David Garves, over to you. And David, if you hey guys. Uh, sorry about that. I wasn't quite quite ready. I would have been. I saw I was next. Anyhow, hey, I'm building on Will's question a little bit. Absolutely love that he asked. I have the same issue. You know, I've been around for a long time. Uh agent like number 56 in Minnesota. So super early to the game, I struggled with the nobody's heard of us and, and how do you present value? And now I'm in the, yeah, but I'm this medium level guy with these monsters that have come over from all the other thing. Somebody had mentioned though, Mr. Flanagan had mentioned um, leveraging your upline. The other issue that I've got is that my upline sucks. The guy that brought me in left within six months. The guy that brought him in has moved on to Southern California is almost inactive. And then I've got one person before Mr. Flick himself um, to, to really bring anything to the table. And what we're seeing is a lot of people doing the leave and come back six months later under the wolf pack or under you know some of those other giants in the, the group. What kind of advice can you give us, uh, you know, again, no no leveraging the upline, and I wonder if signing up for something, and I, I'm 
promise I'm not a plant here. I'm literally stumbling in for one of my first meetings with you guys, but leveraging Sean and his coaching program, would that give us some kind of benefit? Um, you know, oh, yeah. I, I name dropped Sean three times this morning because I was meeting with Keller Williams people and Sean is like a, a real estate God in the Keller Williams world. And so absolutely sign up and use his cloud. We piggyback off of him every day. <laughs> I love it, Amanda. Keep doing that, by the way. Definitely keep doing that. Oh, by the way, there's many free trainings that we offer here. We do two free masterminds every single week, um, every Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific. Guys, you can leverage what we're doing here. You don't have to leave and come back six months later. You can invite people to attend these free trainings. Guys, we don't charge anything for it. We just want to help you grow our amazing company. See, it's all for one, one for all. It's kind of like the three musketeers. See, the community, the culture that I want to foster here at eXp is that, number one, we always see the best in each other. Okay, number two, we want the best for each other. And number three, we expect the best from each other. Y'all with me on that culture? That's what I want to see here is that you can leverage through me. There's all kinds of free things that we're doing. You can leverage my website. You can download all the free stuff we have over there, provide it to your people. Seriously, leverage through me. You don't believe and come back six months later. The family tree is awesome. And David, I don't know how many you have in your group, but I know whenever I was first now trying to get into the luxury division in my area, it was the same thing. Oh, well, so-and-so has 40 high-end listings and this person has $35 million listings. You don't have any. Why why would I go with you? And I was I used that to my advantage. I said, they're going to put that one with their other 45 listings. It's not going to make a difference. They're not going to go to bed at night thinking, how am I going to sell that one person's house, right? This is my only million dollar listing. I'm going to like wake up thinking about it, have my coffee thinking about it. And so you, if you're small and you're and you're not in this huge group, go, they're going to put you with the other 4,000 people, right? They're great. It's amazing. We all work together, right? But I'm only looking for 20 rock, rock stars by the end of the year. And I'm only on number four. And I would love for you to be number five. And you'd be so important to me. And you could call me whenever you want, because I don't have 2000 people in my group. So whatever situation you're in, pivot it and make it a benefit. Love it. Thanks, you guys. Great input, Amanda. God, you've been so amazing and so transparent. We really appreciate you being here, Amanda. You guys, everybody, I, I do have to run um, yet. We do this every single Wednesday, 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific. Guys, I want you to keep showing up. Seriously, let us just pour into you. Let us add value. By the way, invite your entire revenue share organization to jump on this free Wednesday call. We do it every single week. Let's get them motivated and inspired. Remember, there's four categories that you have to focus on if you choose to build a powerful revenue share organization. Number one, well, that's recruiting. Number two is retention. This call will definitely help retain those agents. Number three is revenue or per agent production. And number four is reproduction. That's why I do this call, because I want everybody in my organization, I want everybody in your organization to show up to this call so we can learn from one another. Amanda, thank you. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, this has been an amazing session today. Seriously, I, I, I extracted so much value uh, from everything that you've said, and, and I'm just so grateful. So guys, until thank we talk again, uh, so thank any you, last thoughts, parting thoughts, Amanda? Words of wisdom? No, thank you. Thank you all for having me. I swear it's like an EXP family. And the longer you're here, the more you just really fill the culture and community. So reach out for anything. We're all in this together. And thank you, Sean, for having me. My pleasure. Now, until we talk again next time, you guys, just be on purpose, be productive. And as always, be powerful. See you next week. Bye-bye. One question.